Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasurungan. Please like, and here you can also ask, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things such as artworks. Be greatly appreciated. And you can change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to talk about orbitals of electrons. Let's begin with the atom. Now, let's look at some characteristics of the atom first. An atom has a mass, and an atom also occupies a volume. The nucleus is positively charged, and the electrons around it are negatively charged. Atoms can also combine with other atoms to form a bond. What's important to know is that the differences in elements are determined by the variations in nuclei structure and the electrons. In this video, we're actually going to concentrate on electrons. And electrons also have a mass, about 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, so very, very small, very, very light. Electrons also behave like magnets and light, which means that they have a wave and particle duality. What does this mean? Well, a photon, which is a light particle, can be a wave, can have wave properties, which means that it can have color as well as a particular frequency. A photon, a light particle, can also carry energy. And so when it hits something, it can exert some form of pressure because it has energy. And so, this is the wave-particle duality, because the photon can both, can both be a wave and a particle. So for example, a photon can even hit an electron, and because a photon carries energy, when it hits it, when it hits an electron, it provides energy to the electron, and so the electron will become excited. An electron, as I mentioned, has also this wave and particle duality. So let's have a closer look at this um, duality relationship. And this is where the Heisenberg uncertainty principle comes in, and you might have already heard of it. But essentially, any particle, we can know its location. However, a wave has no fixed position, because when you think about it, a wave on the beach, it just keeps going. And this is very much the same as the electron of an atom. Here we have the nuclei, and surrounding the nuclei, we have an electron. But the electrons occupy this space around it, somewhere. And this is the wave principle, because it has no fixed position. The position of the electron cannot be known in this space. However, we can stop the time and know where it's most likely going to be, this electron. And this is where Werner Heisenberg comes in, this man with the uncertainty principle. He says that we cannot simultaneously know both the position and the momentum of any particle electron. And so essentially, if we know the position of a moving electron or particle, there is uncertainty in knowing its velocity and vice versa. Okay, so we don't know, we, we cannot know the position and the vol velocity momentum simultaneously for an electron. And this is why it has this wave principle. It occupies the space. However, an electron density map can describe where an electron is most likely to be. And these maps have particular shapes and sizes dependent on the level of energy of these electrons. These shapes and sizes are known as electron orbitals, which we will look into next. Now this might get confusing, but each electron has a set of four numbers called quantum numbers. Uh, and no, elect, no two electrons have the same quantum number. And these quantum numbers enable us to label electrons in orbitals, which we just talked about. Now this might get confusing, but I hope step by step you'll understand. But essentially, their electrons have four quantum numbers. We have the principal quantum number, designated n, azimuthal quantum number, l, magnetic quantum number, m with a small l, and then we have spin quantum number, m with a small s. Now, these three, the principal, azimuthal, and magnetic quantum numbers, um, they help in, in finding the probability of finding an electron um, at various positions in space. And these various positions, positions in space is what's called the electron orbitals. 
Now, first of all, in order to find the probability of finding an electron in various points in space, which is the electron orbitals, we have to know the energy of an electron. And this is the principal quantum number, which is basically the energy of an electron in an atom. And this is a positive value, where n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 5 being the higher energy level. We can also designate these as letters instead of numbers. So we have for 1, the letter K, for 2, the letter L, for 3, the letter M, for 4, the letter N, and for the energy level 5, we have O. But usually we use the numbers in, in designating electrons. And the energy level of an electron is also called an electron shell. So these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, can also be called an electron shell. The size of the electron orbital also depends on N. So as N rises up, the size of the orbital also increases. And so also remember that what we're talking about of, pro of finding the probability of finding an electron in various points of space is finding them in a, in a particular electron orbital. And the next step we can take is um, the azimuthal quantum number, which is L. And this distinguishes orbitals of a given n having different shapes. So essentially, where n is the energy of the electron, L is the shape of um, the orbital where the electron is in. And these have integer values of 0 to n minus 1. So essentially, we always start with 0. And we never have the same number as n, because it's always n minus 1. So if that's a bit confusing, let's look at some examples. So the electron has a principal quantum number of n is 3, n is 2, and n is 5. So let's find the L values. So we know we always have to start with 0. So n3, value for L are 0, then 1, then 2. And we don't have 3 because we have to end with n minus 1, which is 2. Now let's look at the principal quantum number 2. What are the values of L? Well, it's 0 because we start with 0, and it's n minus 1, so we have 1 in this case. And for n minus n is 5, the quantum number is 5, we, values for L are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, because um, n minus 1 of the principal quantum number 5 is 4. So the letter L, the azimuthal quantum number, um, has the values, can have values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can also abbreviate this with letters, such as for 0 we can have S, for 1 we can have P, for 2 we can have D, 3 we can have F, and 4 we can have G. But we are mainly going to look at the first three um, shaped orbitals, the S orbital, the P orbital, and the D orbital. Now, something to point out is that these L values can be known as subshells, whereas the principal quantum number, they are the shells, the azimuthal quantum number, they are the subshells. Okay, something very important to grasp here is that to denote a subshell in a particular shell, so to, to denote uh, the, sh the azimuthal quantum number in a principal quantum number, we have to use the quantum number of the principal quantum number, but we use the letter of the azimuthal quantum number. So, for example, we have, let's just say, the subshells 3D, 2P, and 1S. So, 3D will mean that the principal quantum number is 3, because we're using the number, and that the azimuthal quantum number is 2, because D is 2. For the subshells 2p, the principal quantum number is 2 because we're using the numbers. And for the azimuthal quantum number, which is the letter, p is 1, so l is 1. For the subshells 1s, n, the principal quantum number is 1, and the azimuthal quantum number, simply enough, is 0. So this is important to understand. And the third uh, quantum number is the magnetic quantum number, abbreviated M with a small L, sort of. And this disting distinguishes orbitals of given energy N and shape L 
by having different orientations in space. So recapping, the principal, num principal number tells us the energy of the electron, the azimuthal quantum number, the shape of the orbital where the electron's in, and the magnetic quantum number tells us the different orientations of this shape. So, yeah, the different orientations the shape can take. And so the magnetic quantum number can have integer values, usually beginning with a negative magnetic quantum number to a positive magnetic quantum number. And these integer values depend on the azimuthal quantum number L. So usually the integer values of the magnetic quantum number is negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And these values increase in increments depending on the azimuthal quantum number. So to understand this, let's look at some examples. So here we have the azimuthal quantum number equal to 0. And this is the ebb s subshell. And so the magnetic quantum number value is zero because, first of all, there is no uh, shape for L is zero. And so there can be no different orientations in space. So if L is zero, the magnetic quantum number has a value also of zero. Then we have the azimuthal quantum number equal to one, which means that this is the p orbital. And this means that the uh, magnetic quantum number has values of negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Because L is 1, this will give the magnetic quantum number negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Okay, now because we have three magnetic quantum numbers, it means that we have three different orientations in space for a particular azimuthal quantum number. Which means that for the p orbital, there are three types of orientations and so there are three types of p orbitals. Now if the azimuthal quantum number is 2 this would mean that it, it would have the d orbital and so the magnetic quantum number will be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1 and positive 2. And because we have five different orientations in space, five different magnetic quantum numbers, this would mean that we have five types of d orbitals. So we have three types of p orbitals and five types of d orbitals. Can you see the pattern here? And so if we look at the azimuthal quantum number three, which means that it would have a f orbital, the magnetic quantum number will be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, positive three, because uh, the the L is 3, we begin with negative 3 and we end in positive 3. And as you, can, as you can see, the magnetic quantum number, they are 7. And so we have 7 types of f orbitals. So you can see how this keeps increasing. But we don't go further than G or F usually. And we'll mainly look at the S subshell, uh, the S orbital, the P orbital, and the D orbital. Something I'm going to throw out there is that two electrons fit in each orbital, which means that two electrons can fit only in the s orbital. However, two electrons can fit in each of the p orbitals. So remember, there are three types of p orbitals. So this gives us a total of six. Two electrons can fit into each d orbital, and we have five types of d orbitals. So this gives us... Uh, 10 electrons fitting in all of the d orbitals. And the f orbital, we have 7 types of f orbitals, which means that 14 electrons can fit in an f orbital. And now let's look at the very last quantum number, the spin quantum number, ms. And this doesn't tell us the, the probability of finding an electron of ver in various points in space, the electron orbitals. It just tells us the behavior of an electron. And essentially, Electrons occupying a orbital can either have a spin up or a spin down. And because of this, only two electrons max, maximum, can fit into each orbital. Because one can only have spin up and the other can have spin down. And we'll talk about spin quantum numbers because it, has an import, it is important in the orbital filling. Uh, such as, which is something to do with electron configuration, which we'll look into in the next video. 
But for now, let's look at the uh, overview of the atomic orbital shapes, beginning with the s orbitals. And here we have the 1s orbital. This means that the principal quantum number is 1, the azimuthal quantum number is 0, and uh, which means that the magnetic quantum number is 0, because if the azimuthal is 0, the magnetic quantum number is 0. And this means that it has basically no shape. It's just it has no orientation and no particular shape. It occupies a uh, just the same volume. And it's like a circle. And so this 1s orbital has a 99% contour size, where 99% of the electrons will be. And in the 1s orbital, two electrons can fit maximum. Now let's look at the 2s orbital. This means that the principal quantum number is 2. And the letter S tells us that the azimuthal quantum number is 0. And this means that the magnetic quantum number is 0. Because without a shape, there is no axis. There's no orientations in space. And there's, this also has a 99% contour, which is where the 99% uh, of electrons will be in this particular space. And only two electrons maximum can fit in this 2s orbital. Important to know is that the 2s orbital occupies a greater space than the 1s. This is because the 2s has a larger principal in the quantum number. So it has it, whereas 1s is 1, 2s is 2. And this, if we go to 3s, 3s will have a greater has a greater space, space where the electrons can be in. Okay, that was it for s. Let's look at the p orbitals. Now, after 1s and 2s orbitals, we have the orbital 2p, which is uh, we which we which has the principal quantum number 2 and the azimuthal quantum number 1. And we cannot have a 1p orbital. And this is because if 2p has a principal quantum number of 2, n equals 2, the highest value as mutual quantum number can have is n minus 1, which is 1. But a 1p orbital means that the principal quantum number is 1, and that the azimuthal quantum number is also 1, which is impossible because the highest azimuthal quantum number can go for a particular principal quantum number is n minus 1 which in this case should be zero. I hope you understood that, but back to the p orbital. Because the azimuthal quantum number is one, this means that the magnetic quantum number, there are three, negative one, zero, and positive one. And so there are three possible orientations in space for this 2p orbital. We have here 2px, 2py, and 2pz where the orbitals in 2px occupies the x-axis, the orbitals in 2py oper um, operates the y-axis, and the 2pz operates the z-axis. Now, remember what I said about two electrons fitting into each orbital? Well, because we have three different types of uh, p orbitals, two electrons can fit in each, giving us a total of six electrons. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Now, there are three p orbitals actually in each subshell uh, L. So, for example, if we look at the 3p orbital, this also has three different types of p orbitals. It's just got a different uh, energy level. It's got a principal uh, quantum number of three. And similar with the 4p, with the fourth energy level, this also has three different types of p orbitals. So that's it for p orbitals. Let's look at d orbitals. And d orbitals has the subshell or the azimuthal quantum number of 2, meaning that the magnetic quantum number is negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2, meaning that there are five different types of d orbitals because there are five different orientations in space. And so these are the five d orbitals. Uh, you don't have to like memorize it, but just know that there are five different types of uh, d orbitals. So we have dxy, dyz, dxz, uh, dx squared, y squared, d, z squared. Don't worry, I don't even know what they mean. But uh, what's also important to know is that two electrons can fit in each, giving us a total of 10 electrons fitting in the d orbitals. Keep that in mind. Hope that made sense this video. It's, orbitals are really important for chemistry. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And this was probably the hardest it was going to get for orbitals. Next, we'll look at electron configuration and valence electrons, which should be pretty easy if we already know some of this stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.